Are you ready to incubate your hatching eggs? I am. Let's get started. So we need to put our hatching eggs into the incubator. I have my incubator is already primed. It has been running for 24 hours. It is at the correct temperature of 99.5. The humidity is at the correct humidity level. You want it between 48% to 55%. If you haven't watched it yet, I have a video all about setting up your incubator. This here is the Mana Pro Nurture Right 360. So I have that video on how to set all of it up. And then I also have a video on how to wash your eggs prior to incubation. Some people do, some people don't. I have done it both ways. Personally, I have better hatches when I wash them. If you wash them correctly, then you can eliminate a lot of the bacteria on the surface of the eggshell. You want to make sure that you are cleaning your incubator properly and disinfecting it. And also, if you choose to wash your eggs, washing and disinfecting your eggs as well. All of my eggs are now washed. They have been drying in these containers. I actually really like these containers. I got them at the dollar store. They're typically used for eggs that you're gonna eat, but we are not eating these eggs today. We are going to hatch baby chicks. It's an exciting day here because today is actually hatching day in our other incubator. So if you hear little chirps, we have one chicky baby that was born this afternoon. I'm so excited. I can't wait to meet all the chicky babies that are gonna be born today and potentially into tomorrow. Come take a look. <laughs> Isn't that chicky baby precious? Okay, so when placing your eggs into the incubator, make sure that you wash your hands. Always have clean hands when handling your cleaned eggs. And then you want to remove the cover. Place your eggs in there so that the pointy side of the egg is facing inward. Before the eggs go in, make sure that your temperature is at 99.5. You should be verifying it with a thermometer. This here is a brooder thermometer that I have that I use for the brooder. I also use it for my incubators and I already, I already had it in there and the temperature was accurate between the two. So I'm very happy and feel comfortable putting my eggs into this incubator. I don't have to adjust the temperature. However, you may run into that and you may have to make some temperature adjustments to match your thermometer. You want to make sure you do have an accurate temperature because that can affect your hatch rate. And our goal is 100% hatch rate. That is what we're going for. The humidity, you wanna make sure that that is correct, that your humidity level is somewhere between 48% to 55% for your first 18 days. The last three days of your hatch is when you're going to be adjusting the humidity to increase the humidity to a higher level to aid in hatching. I see one hat dad just a new baby? Yep. Did you always saw it? I did. Okay, we're going to remove the lid. I've washed my hands and I will gently place the hatching eggs. The slight point is going to be going towards the middle of this particular incubator. Farm, a wicked awesome farm. Watch this channel to learn what to do. We love to farm and we'll show you. Yeah, welcome to our show. Whoa. Just one more story farm. I'm going to add some distilled water because we did lose some humidity. Add some. This is something I do daily where I add a bit more water as needed to this incubator to make sure that our humidity level is right around 48 to 55 percent. Okay, now that the eggs are in, we want to check to make sure that the automatic turner is working properly. Egg turning test run, positive plus negative. And then we watch and make sure that all the eggs turn properly. Since that's working properly, we're going to reset the days to hatch. To reset the hatch, you need to press the menu button and the negative button at the same time and hold it 
for five seconds. When you hear the beep, it will automatically reset. And if you press the menu button, it will now say day 21. Now we'll allow this incubator to come up to the 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And right now we are at 58% humidity. So we'll let that stabilize. It can take a couple hours for the humidity to stabilize. So we're gonna give that some time. During the incubation process, I do candle my eggs to make sure that they are developing properly, to be sure that they are all fertilized, and also to make sure that there are no embryonic deaths. When candling your eggs, you wanna make sure that you are washing your hands first. You don't wanna introduce bacteria to your eggshells or into the incubator. Because on day seven of incubation is when I do the candling for the first time to see how many eggs are fertile. To candle the eggs, I use a candling flashlight. You can use a regular flashlight. You can use the flashlight on your cell phone if you have that. You wanna candle your egg with the pointy side down and put it directly on top of the flashlight and turn the flashlight on to be able to see what's inside of the egg. I'm gonna do this inside of a dark room so that way you're able to see more clearly what is going on inside your egg. At day seven inside of a hatching egg, if it is fertilized, you should see some red veins developing along the inside of the egg as well as a small black area which is your developing embryo. Sometimes you can see movement but not always. You have to look really closely. If your egg does not have any veins developing, you don't see an embryo, if it's just the yolk that's floating around in there, then that would be an unfertilized egg and you can remove those from your incubator. If you're not sure, you can leave them in the incubator if I have eggs that I'm not sure about the fertilization, then I will leave them and check them again at day 10 and candle them. Typically, I will candle my eggs on day seven, day 10, day 14, and then the very last time I candle my eggs is on day 18, and that is when I make any final decisions as to if the chicks inside of the egg are continuing to develop or not. This flashlight is called the Nest Echo. I got this off of Amazon. Works really well. It comes in its own special little kit. It also has a battery that's rechargeable, so it comes with a charger to recharge your battery. So that's a convenient feature. My incubator does come with a candler on the top. With my hen's eggs being brown, I do find the visibility is more difficult to see with the incubator flashlight. So I do like the stronger flashlight of the Nest Echo. Occasionally on day seven, you may see an embryo that has started to develop, but unfortunately had an early embryonic death you'll be able to tell that if there is a red ring. If you see a dark red, almost black ring going around your egg, that is a sign that the embryo that was developing inside of the hatching egg unfortunately had an early embryonic death. So those eggs can be removed from your incubator. It's sad when that happens. You do want to remove them though, because unfortunately if you leave them in there, they do have the potential to rot and you don't want to have a potential explosion from the rotting egg exploding inside the incubator. That would be really dangerous for the other chicks trying to hatch inside of your incubator. At day seven, it can be hard to tell exactly what's going on in the egg as far as development. So it's okay to wait till day 10 to make some calls. Sometimes I even wait till day 14 if I'm not sure, but an egg that is not fertile is usually pretty clear to see because the whole egg is clear. There's no blood vessels, so that's easy to tell but it's those ones that you're not seeing a blood ring and you're not, and you are seeing some blood vessels, but you're not seeing too much development. Those are the questionable ones that you likely hang on to a little bit longer and wait till the next candling to see if they are developing any further. The next day that I candle is 10 days into incubation and that is to check on development and make sure that the embryo is continuing to grow. And after that, I check again at 14 days into incubation, followed by 18 days of incubation. Day 18 is the day that 
I do my final candling and make my final decisions as to if there's any eggs that need to be removed. When you get to day 18, the check is going to be taking up almost the entire egg at that point, but you should see some movement. I do talk to them. I find when I talk to them on day 18 that they do typically respond and move around inside their shell to let me know, hey, I'm here. And that gives me comfort that they are still doing well before I lock them down and won't see them again until it's time for them to hatch and come out of the shell. During lockdown, you're removing that egg turner so that they are no longer Longer being turned manually. You are increasing the humidity of your incubator up to 65 to 75% humidity for the last three days in the Mana Pro incubator like I have. Check the instructions for your incubator because they may be a little bit different. And then you want to wait and see. Watch those hatching chicks. It's a beautiful process watching them hatch. It can be a slow process. You'll start to see them pipping. Sometimes the day before hatch day, you'll see some pipping. And then on hatching day typically is when you'll see them unzipping. Unzipping is where they are chipping away at the shell and trying to escape from their egg. So you'll see that it can be a long process or a really short process. It all depends on the chick and how quickly and how motivated they are to come out of their shell. And once they hatch out of their shell, you'll notice that they are all wet, but they will dry when they're in the incubator. They're under their when they're in the incubator and it's nice and warm. Most incubators do have a fan that's blowing air the warm air around, which helps blow dry them essentially. And I find that with my chicks, it takes about 12 hours for them to fluff up and have nice dry feathers. Sometimes it can take up to 24 hours for them to get completely dry. So I don't like to take them out of the incubator and into the brooder until it's been a full 24 hours and they look fully dry. It's also not recommended to remove your chicks from the brooder until everybody is done hatching, but you do have to make a judgment call because if you have any eggs that are not hatching, you do have live chicks that need to get food and water. I don't like to keep my chicks in the incubator for more than 48 hours. At that point is when I make a judgment call if they're still in there and there's still more hatching to remove those chicks but you do have to make sure that you don't have a hatching egg that's pipping or unzipping because if you remove a chick from the incubator, you're going to change the temperature and the humidity level of your incubator, which could potentially vacuum seal a chick that is currently hatching because of that drastic change in humidity. So you need to be very careful when it's time to move chicks to the brooder. But in the best case scenario, all your chicks hatch within that one to two day frame and then all your eggs are hatched and you have all these happy chicks and you're able to move them all at once into the brooder. If some chicks are slow to hatch and it takes longer than those two days, then you're gonna have to make a judgment call and remove those chicks when there's nobody else pipping and unzipping at that time. Look at all the chicky babies that have been keeping us busy this week. These chicks were born earlier this week. Along with these chicks as well. So we've been very busy playing with these chicky babies all week. Aren't they just so cute? Oh, I love them. <laughs> If you'd like to see more videos about incubating, please check out the videos I have linked. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now you're learning to farm like me. There is so much more to see. If you're planning on heading elsewhere, Bangi Kiwi, yeah, yeah, yeah.